Hello, everyone. Some of my mechanical friends are trying to get back to Gecko's garage today. So I think we should go and pick them up on this amazing Arriva bus. Buses are fantastic vehicles. They carry lots of passengers around town and take people to places they need to go. Buses have lots of space inside to fit as many people on as possible. What shape is this bus? Yes, it's a rectangle. Look how many seats are in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 seats! Wow! And when the seats are full, there's even places for people to stand. Look, you can hold on to these handrails. And these grab handles too, to make sure you don't fall over when the bus stops. This is Mary, and she's the driver of this bus. Mary's just going round the bus to do all of her safety checks before going out on the road. What shape are the wheels on the bus? Yes, they're a circle. This bus is special because it runs on electricity. That means it doesn't have to be filled with petrol or diesel. But instead, it can be plugged in and charged. It's got a big battery that stores all of the electricity up on the roof. Hi Gecko, do you want to come and see where I drive my bus? Yes, please. Mary sits in a place called the cab, and to get into the driving seat, she opens this door and climbs inside. Mary can then press this button to open and close the electric doors. There's lots of other buttons and controls for Mary to press in here too. To start the bus, Mary presses this button. I think it's time we went and picked up the mechanicals. Mary, can I buy a ticket, please? To buy a ticket, passengers give the correct money to the driver and she prints them a ticket. Mary can change the sign on the front to tell people where the bus is going. Hooray! We're off to my garage. Don't worry, mechanicals. We're coming for you. The lights on the bus go flash, 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 flash. The lights on the bus go flash, 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 all day long. The tickets on the bus go print, 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 print. The tickets on the bus go print, 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 all day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all day long. Oh, hey there. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, 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 all day long. Oh, ho. The doors on the bus go open and close, open and close, open and close. The doors on the bus go open and close all day long. Hello, Red Mechanical. I hope we didn't keep you waiting there too long. Come on board, take a seat. The thing I love best about travelling around on a bus is looking out of the big windows and spotting things. There's lots of different shaped road signs around. 
This one is square. This one is a circle. And this one is a triangle. This one's very important because it tells vehicles to slow down because there might be children around. Hello, Blue Mechanical. We've had to stop at a traffic light because it's on red. There's three different traffic light colours. Red, amber and green. The red light means stop. The amber light means the signal is about to change. And green means go, go, go. This bus is very smooth and very quiet because it runs on electricity. That means it's even better for the environment than other buses. It's Green Mechanical. Hello. Right, I think that's everyone now. Let's head back to the garage. Can you remember all of the shapes we've learned today? Rectangle. Circle. Square. And triangle. Thanks very much to Mary and all the team at Ariba for taking us on this amazing bus journey today. What do you say, Mechanicals? That's thank you. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy? Can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here, and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tyre with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, 
those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons – spring, summer, autumn and winter – to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back, forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! Whoa, look at that! That isn't just any bus, that's a double-decker bus. Look, there's a downstairs and an upstairs. I'm just waiting at a bus stop for the next bus to arrive. All you have to do to catch a bus is put your hand out like this and the bus will stop. This is Brian and he's the driver of this bus. He sits in a place called the cab. Here it comes now. Brian presses the red button and the doors fold open. This bus is special because it can move up and down to let people get on more easily. Red Mechanical, where have you been on this bus? You've been playing in the junkyard? 
Oh well, I hope you had fun. Come on, let's get on board. You can fit up to 75 people on this double-decker bus. I think I'm going to sit upstairs to see the lovely views. Woohoo! I can see everything up here! The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. Here we are back at the bus depot. I'll just press the bell to ask the driver to stop. Shall we have a closer look at the controls here in the cab? The driver can press all sorts of buttons to make things happen. This button controls the sign on the front of the bus, which tells people where the bus is going to. This is the ticket machine. And these screens are connected to cameras so the driver can see the passengers upstairs. These buses travel all over the city, so they sometimes get very dirty. Shall we put this double-decker bus through the special bus wash to give it a clean? It's time to use the water and brushes to clean our double-decker buses. Through this truck wash, our bus will crawl. Have you ever seen a bus so tall. Look at that. Clean as a whistle. Where do you think the engine is in this double-decker bus? Surprise! It's here, right at the back. And these buses are special because they run on electricity and diesel. When the bus is going slowly and picking up people from bus stops, the bus uses an electric motor. This makes it much quieter than other buses. Just be careful not to fall asleep on your way home. But even these buses need to be repaired sometimes. Instead of bringing them to Gecko's garage, they're brought here to the Arriva maintenance garage where expert mechanics can repair them. Look how many buses are being worked on at the same time. This bus is having a wheel changed. And here's another bus driving into the garage. It drives in and parks over a big hole in the floor called the pit. If there's something wrong underneath the bus, a mechanic can go down into the pit and fix anything while standing underneath. Or they can use a giant hydraulic lift to lift it up and make it even taller. When everything's fixed on the bus, it's time to leave the garage and go back out onto the road to take more passengers where they need to go. I've loved learning all about double-decker buses today. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone, I love steam trains, so today is my lucky day. I'm in North Wales to go on a ride through the Snowdonia Mountains and learn all about these amazing machines. Woohoo! This train is just leaving the station now. Look at all that steam coming out. It's no wonder they're called steam trains. Many years ago, these trains were used to transport slate from up high in the mountains. But now they're just used to take lucky passengers on amazing train rides. Come on, let's get on board. These old-fashioned carriages are very comfy. And you can even get yummy hot chocolate served straight to your seats. This train is the best. 
Just look at the amazing views out of the windows as we steam our way through the Snowdonia Mountains. Wow, it's beautiful here. We're all very clean and comfortable in here. But I wonder what it's like for the driver in the cabin up front. The part of the train that does all of the hard work is called the locomotive. And it's up to the driver and the fireman to keep the locomotive running and pulling all of those carriages and passengers. Steam trains run on coal and the fireman has to shovel lots of it into the firebox to keep the engine running. This is Ian, and he's the driver of this locomotive. Ian, please can you tell us how coal makes the train go? So this is the coal we burn on our steam engine. Put it in the fire there. And we burn it and that creates lots and lots of heat. And that heat we use to boil this water. Um, it's just like boiling your kettle at home. It makes the steam come out the top, but we capture that steam and we send it to the front of this steam logo and that makes us go. To make sure there's enough coal for the journey ahead, the crew have to load up the train's coal from the coal store at the station. This is hard, tiring and dirty work. All of the crew that work on the train are volunteers too, which means they don't get paid. They do it because they love the trains. This is Claire and she's the fireman. It's her job to load the coal into the firebox and keep that fire roaring. And what I'm doing now is I'm making my fire bigger because we're pulling a very big train today. So it needs a nice, big, very hot fire to be able to do that. I love steam trains because I just find them magical. As well as loading the coal into the train, it's just as important to make sure the train has plenty of water in the tank because this is what gets turned into steam, which pushes the train forwards. The crew are topping up this train's tank with water now. Wow, this one's thirsty. Ian, how do you drive a steam train? We drive a steam train by making it go faster like that. And then this is the brake. And this is what we use to stop ourselves. So this lever here makes us go either forwards or backwards. And that is how you drive a steam train. Let's take a look at the different parts of a steam train. Here's the cab. This is where the driver and fireman drive the train and load the fire. Inside here is the firebox, which is really, really hot. Above the firebox sits the boiler, where the water is stored. Because this is right above the fire, the water boils and turns into steam. The steam is then forced down through a pipe and pushes something called a piston, which then drives the wheels forwards or backwards. This is the chimney, which is where the smoke from the firebox can escape. And most importantly, this is the whistle. The whistle works when I pull this handle. And that means that steam is going up to the whistle and making the sound. Ian's connecting a carriage to the locomotive. This is called coupling. Because these trains are very old, they take a lot of looking after which is why the Festiniog and Welsh Highland Railway have their own special garage with an amazing team of engineers, mechanics, joiners and painters. This place is a hive of activity. In here, they're building a brand new carriage from scratch. And in here, this is where the beautiful details on the outside of the carriage are painted on by hand. Well, 
it's time for me to say goodbye to these beautiful trains. Thanks very much to all the team at the Festinyog and Welsh Highland Railway for teaching us all about steam trains. See you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm travelling around on a very special fun bus today. This double-decker bus has been transformed into a soft play party bus. This is Paul and he's the driver of the bus. He drives to lots of different places for children's birthday parties. You can have a party anywhere! Here comes the bright yellow party bus now. Welcome aboard the party bus. There are two floors on this bus. A downstairs and an upstairs. Let's climb the stairs and take a look upstairs first. Whoa! It's so much fun up here. There's a tunnel. A rope bridge. These are called biffers and bashers. Hey, Red Mechanical, how did you get in here? Red Mechanical never misses a party. To get down, we can either go back down the stairs or we can go down the mega green slide. Go on, Red, you can test it out. Woo! When you come down the green slide, you land in a colourful ball pool. Look! Red Mechanical is holding a green ball. This is an orange ball. And here's a purple ball. The fun doesn't stop there. Downstairs, there's more places to run around and climb. Paul's getting the bus ready for a party, so it's time to connect the bus to a generator. A generator is something that uses fuel to generate electricity. That means Paul can turn the disco lights and music on in the bus. Here come the kiddies now, ready to party. Running round the play bus, everyone's very hungry, so it's time for some party food. These tables upstairs are just right for enjoying some sandwiches. Paul places yellow paper plates on the table. One, two, three, four, and again. One, two, three, yellow paper plates. Now Paul is placing down orange drinks. One, two, three, four. And they need red straws. One, two, three, four. Four red straws. Yum, yum. Before everyone leaves, there's one last thing to do. Give out the party bags. 
We can't have a party without party bags. Phew! After all that excitement, I'm ready for a lie down. Thanks very much to Paul for showing us around his fantastic double-decker party bus. We'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!